Uh, good afternoon. This is Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And uh, what have I got on the cards for today? Well, I want to walk you through a uh, review of an operating system that I've used before. It's been a while. But it's called Linux FX. Uh, this one's Linux FX 11. I can't remember what version it was when I looked at it a while back. Uh, but it was not 11, obviously. Um, this particular distribution is Brazilian in origin and it uh, mimics Windows 11 in a lot of ways. It has functionality uh, that Windows 11 has and that Microsoft has. In fact, you can get uh, Microsoft Office Suite access to it through the operating system and some other things. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and uh, walk you through the review. I've already installed it and uh, I will let you know that it is a beefy operating system. Um, I had to um, run it in Vert Manager. It would not install in VirtualBox. I uh, could not get it to install regardless of what I did. So what I did was I installed Vert Manager and with QEMU KVM and um, it did it that way. Uh, I gave it 8 gigs of RAM uh, and uh, I have uh, two processors being uh, allocated to it as well. So uh, you will need to, if you install it on a bare metal, you're going to need at least 8 gigs of RAM and you will need uh, at least a dual core processor, uh, but, but you know, multiple threads if you have it. I have a quad core, so I'm giving two of them in this vert manager to Linux FX 11. So let me go ahead and click on it and uh, start it and then open it. I will have another video that shows the uh, actual setup of um, Linux FX 11 in Vert Manager, but this one I'm just going to show a review of Linux FX 11. Um, and so give me a few seconds here. It'll be coming up and go to full screen. Um, so it, it does take a few seconds to spin up. All right, here we are. And uh, I've already set it up and everything, so I'm going to put in my password. And uh, it's got that Windows 10, Windows 11 look and feel to it. And then we'll go through Linux, uh, Linux FX 11. All right, here we are. Got the wired connection. I've got it set up as a bridged adapter, so it does have an IP address that is uh, local to my machine. All right, so this is Linux FX 11 1 1103. It does come with Microsoft Edge web browser, it does have Linux FX Android support. Um, and the menu that I'm using is this one here. You can right click and uh, select. Um, show alternatives you do have some alternatives you've got a I'm using the application menu but you do have an application launcher and an application dashboard you've got a menu 11 uh, a menu X and a menu Z I haven't used any of these yet um, but I, I like the, the application menu so I'm going to stick with that so I'm going to cancel this so let's go ahead and uh, look along the bottom here here's the search window and if I type in console and bring that up. It does have the Microsoft PowerPoint, PowerShell rather, um, interface as well, which is interesting. Here's the console. And so uh, I've already got it set up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sudo apt update. Put in my password. And uh, run all the updates for it. I don't know if I have any updates. Um, over here is an, a notification, by the way, Linux FX operating system. You're using the free version of Linux FS, FX. And so the WX desktop tools um, are running in uh, trial mode. That's one thing you'll need to do. You'll need to get a license key for this thing uh, if you want to be able to continue to uh, set it up, configure it for your own liking, and uh, use some of the tools available. I think the minimum is $35, but I'll take a look at that in a minute. It says that there's seven packages to be upgraded. So let's run a sudo apt list and see what's available to be upgraded. 
Um, hmm. All right. So clear the screen. Sudo apt upgrade. It says that I should not be using apt for the upgrades. So you should be using pkcon update. So let me do a sudo pkcon update. All right. It says no packages uh, require updating. Um, so I'm not sure why I got a message. Maybe I misread it. But there's no updates here. So let me go ahead and see if HTOP is available. It is out of the box. And so this is HTOP. I'm running 1.12 gigs of RAM out of 7.77 or 8. So one out of eight, not too bad. Um, got uh, two processors, as I mentioned, with with uh, two threads, so that or with four threads. So that's eight and um, eight threads. And so the memory uh, indication here uh, graphically is uh, not bad. Um, the processes are going up and down depending on what's happening, and they're not being overutilized by any stretch. Uh, I've got 115 tasks, 350 threads, uh, one running. The load average here on this system that's been up now for four minutes is 0 0.53, 9, 0.94, and 0.47. And this is for um, one minute, five minutes, and 15 minutes. Okay, so let me go ahead and quit. And um, let me clear the screen, clean up the terminal. I have Glances installed as well. I install Glances uh, in this operating system. And I like Glances a little bit better because I like the, the layout uh, better. Um, and if you don't know how to install Glances, uh, let me go ahead and close it. Just do a sudo apt install Glances. And that should get it for you. Uh, all right. So let me go ahead and close this, and let me do a df minus kh and take a look at the system. And right now I am running 29% uh, of the uh, 50 gigs that I gave it, 51 gigs it says, but I, I gave it 50. And um, so that's not too bad. So after uh, installing the operating system, uh, I haven't really installed anything else on here. Uh, to speak of, um, maybe Krita, and so 29%, it's not too bad. So this is the layout, I just did a generic uh, install, let it do a race disk and install it from scratch. Alright, and if I run a uname, a, you can see that uh, it is Linux FX VM, which is my host name, based on Ubuntu. Alright, so it's based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Let me clear the screen again, clean up a terminal, and finally let's do a IPA to look at the IP address. So I did uh, use a bridged adapter, and so I do have a local IP address of 192.168.1.120 slash 24 CIDR notation. So it is a Class C network. So I should be able to ping um, this from any other machine that I have on the network. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can SSH into my Raspberry Pi that's running my uh, web browser. And that is SSH Pi at 192.168.1.90. And let me put in the password for Pi. I could type. And there we go. So I'm in. And so if I do an LS, you can see that we have. Um, the typical for the Raspberry Pi. Let me go ahead and see if I can ping um, 192.168.1.120, I believe was the IP address of my Linux FX 11 uh, VM. And yes, so I'm able to ping that just fine. And so let's go ahead and get out of the terminal and uh, get back to the desktop here. So this is the desktop. If you uh, come down to the bottom to the panel, besides the uh, search window here, we have uh, multiple work workspaces. We've got a find function. We've got virtual desktop. We've got widgets we can install. We've got chat built in. We've got Dolphin. If I bring Dolphin up, here's Dolphin. And um, let me see if I can get on to my Raspberry Pi. 
I have some um, shared uh, resources, some sort of shared folders out on uh, the Raspberry Pi. It's with SMB CIFS. Let's see if I can get on there. It says that there are no shared folders. I'm not sure why it's not showing that. I do have another NAS, by the way, so I can go ahead and see if I can get on that. Um, and so I will bring that up. It's a MyCloud uh, EX2 Ultra 4 terabyte RAID 1. And so if I open that in a new window, uh, let's see if it will discover that particular device. And there they are. All right. And so if I double click on Data Pioneer, double click on my videos, and then uh, double click on the LUTC YouTube backup. What I did was I backed up all of my YouTube videos. I called it the Linux Unix Tech Channel YouTube channel. And so if I double click here, you can see I have all 340 of my videos backed up. Uh, the the uh, earliest video being 13 years old. All right, so it's been a while since I've done. Uh, I've got a lot of videos in in 13 years, I think. All right, so let's go ahead and close that uh, Dolphin uh, file manager. Uh, come across here. We've got the uh, Microsoft Edge web browser. Let me go ahead and click on that. Bring that up. And here it is. All right, and so let me get to my uh, Proton Mail, protonmail.com, which is a secure end-to-end -end encrypted email out of Switzerland. Uh, I need to bring up RoboForm first. Put in my master password. Uh, put in the right password. And okay, so I'm logged into that, and now I should be able to use it without having to uh, log in. It controls all of my passwords. Uh, and it's not in the browser, it's in RoboForm. All right, so it's on the cloud. And there we go, so I just click on that and I'll be able to log into my ProtonMail. All right, so this is ProtonMail. All right, and uh, the web-based interface for it. Let me go ahead and sign out. And then finally, let me bring up my website. Uh, datapioneer-network.org And here's my website, DP Network, where technology education begins. All right, I've got a technology lab, um, uh, ARS Technica, RSS feed over here. And uh, I've got uh, my articles here. I've got several hundred articles uh, that I have written over the time. And so, uh, but I'm not, this is not about my website. So let me go ahead and close it. And let me go ahead and close the browser. Get back to the desktop. Come across here. I've got a widget out here called the Weather Widget. And so if I right click and tell it to configure it, uh, I can choose. Uh, oh, it looks like it's already set up. Let me go back and cancel that. And uh, let's put the NOAA. And I can't seem to close this. Hmm. Let me try that again. All right, let me cancel that. And let me go ahead and OK that. And let me close it. Oh, okay, I see what it is. All right, so it's already set for Asheville. Let me apply it. Let me OK. And it should be set up for Asheville, but it's not. So I, I'm not sure why. That's okay. I'll fix it later. Let's come across. Uh, notifications. Any desk. I haven't researched any desk yet, but uh, it looks like it's set up to uh, set up a, a working environment, a workspace for any of your... Um, any machines that it touches on your network. All right, and so here's clipboard contents, volume control, networks here. This is, this is uh, set up for wired right now. And then we should have a calendar. Okay, here's my calendar. And it is Saturday, January the uh, 29th. All right, let me close that. 
So if I right click on the desktop, I can configure desktop and wallpaper. And uh, and so there's plenty of wallpaper to choose from here, guys. Uh, so you've got your choice of wallpaper that you want. A lot of Windows 11 wallpaper, different versions, uh, different look and feel. But I have the uh, the default one set up right now, I believe, which is right here. But uh, I'll just show you. I you know I can click on that, click apply, click OK, and you know I've got another wallpaper here. I want to go back to the one I have. And so let's get back into it here and come back up to the default and let's go ahead and apply that and OK. All right. And so now right click. Uh, I can create new folder, a new text file, new HTML file. I can link to a file or a directory. I can link to an application. I can click on my icon here to sort by size, arrange in rows or columns. I can align them, um, lock the icons, whatever I want to do. Um, it's just your typical stuff here with right clicking on the desktop. Since this is based on Ubuntu, it should be familiar to a lot of you uh, with, you know, with Ubuntu. All right, and so let's get into the menu itself. We've got a development, we've got games, we got full Steam, we've got graphics, GNU image manipulation program. If I click on that, it brings that up, and so we've got the 2.10. All right. And uh, and so for graphics here we've got um, what Gwenview, uh, K Photo Album, Krita, Ocular, uh, Scanlight for Internet. We've got a bunch. Got Chat, Google Chrome, K Mail, K Torrent, Microsoft, Microsoft Edge. We've got uh, uh, Remote Desktop Client uh, and Steam Multimedia. We've got Cheese, uh, K Three B. Kodi OBS Studio, which is nice. VLC Media Player. For Office here, we have a whole plethora of things. We've got KMail, uh, KMyMoney, KOrganizer. We've got uh, Microsoft Calendar, Excel, OneNote. All of these are online. You'll have to have a Microsoft account to access them. Um, Ocular, we've got uh, Only Office. So I'm going to open up the Only Office Center. And here you've got document, spreadsheet, presentation, and form templates. So by default, uh, out of the box, um, Linux FX 11 comes with only Office. I, I use LibreOffice uh, in my Farron OS system. So if I do document, let me click on that. Let me bring that up and show you what it looks like if you haven't seen it. All right, and so let me go ahead and expand that. All right, and so let me just do a heading here. This is a standard heading, okay? And uh, and so it works great. Got a lot of functionality. Looks just like uh, Microsoft Office Suite in a lot of ways, and it's fully compatible with it. All right, so let me go ahead and close this. All right, and let me go ahead and uh, cancel that. I'm not going to save anything. Um, okay, I do not want to save it, so I'll go ahead and close it. All right, let's go back to Office, and uh, so we have no more there. Under Settings, we've got Advanced Network Configuration. We've got Input. We've got Synaptic Package Manager. For System, we have a bunch of stuff. Android, it's got Android support, by the way, Linux FX Android. Uh, Dolphin Info Center. Let me just click on Info Center and let you take a look at that. So you can see that it is Linux FX 11. There's a link to their homepage. Uh, we'll go out there in a moment. Um, it's running KDE Plasma version 5.23.5 with the Qt version 5.15.3 and a kernel version of 5.13.0-27 generic. Uh, all right, and so for we don't need to look at anything else here so let's go back out to system and uh, so we have console k wallet manager device manager uh, we've got the linux fx store you can go ahead and take a look at that microsoft powershell so if i click on that there's a powershell if you know how to use powershell in windows it's got powershell 7.2.1 uh, set up in there all right let me go ahead and uh, quit. I think it's Q-U-I-T. 
Nope, quit's not there. It's not recognized. I don't use PowerShell. All right, so let's see. Let's go back to system. We've got, uh, all right, we've got the uh, Oracle Java 17 console, the shell. And then um, for utilities, we have Android file transfer. Uh, it looks like we've got Kate, KCalc, uh, KWriter, Spectacle, Ulauncher, Wine Tricks. So it runs Wine, installed by default natively. Uh, and help functionality, and then power session, so you can do a lock, log out, switch user, sleep, restart, and shut down. All right, so uh, I'm not familiar with, uh, I don't have an Android, so I'm not familiar with it. I'm going to go ahead and double click on it and see what we have. Not find any Android image, so I don't have anything there, so I'm not going to be able to get into it and do anything with it. I'm not familiar with it either, so sorry about that, guys. Um, all right, so. Let's see what else I can show you. Uh, let's go out to the website. Um, so let's go back out to System, and I believe it was Info Center. And if I bring up um, that, that should take me to the home page for Linux, Linux FX 11. And here it is. And so it says it's fast, stable, and very safe. Uh, the Microsoft Windows 11 interface with speed and security of Linux FX. All right. What I did was I went up to downloads, and you've got a free edition, x86-64 uh, bit for PC. You've got ARM. So this could be installed on a single board computer, potentially even a uh, Raspberry Pi. So I'll have to give that a look. And then you can get a professional key. I went ahead and chose this version and downloaded it and set it up in Vert Manager. Um, like I said, it would not install, would install, but it would not run, rather, no matter what I did, would not run in VirtualBox 6. Could be doing something wrong, not quite sure, but just would not run at all in VirtualBox 6. All right, for release notes, you've got some release notes here. Your software licenses you can access here. For home, you can go about Linux FX learn more about what Linux FX is, the operating system itself, and the different uh, levels uh, of versions that you have available within Linux FX. So I highly recommend you take a look at that. Let's go back to the uh, uh, home page again. And then you've got forum support through Telegram, through, through support forum. You've also, you can uh, get a support ticket uh, set up if you're having issues if you want to have Android devices, you can set up the Linux FX 11 with Android support. You can click on that link right there and get the support for your Android device or come down here and get it from here as well. It's got WX desktop interface, uh, which brings all the menu, the main tools rather for Microsoft Windows 10. That includes uh, the control panel, configuration screens, login, logout, etc., all within WX uh, desktop. Only kicker here is, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, let's go back um, to let's go back here to um, the home page, and uh, if you come down to get professional key, it tells you what you have to do here. It says you'll receive an activation key in an email. It should take a couple hours to receive it. It is a Brazilian product. Uh, this distro, so uh, keep that in mind, keep, bear that in mind. Um, you can put in any dollar amount here. $35 will give you a single license. You can purchase multiple license, and I believe uh, by multiplying the amount by the single license. So if you want to get two licenses, it's uh, $70. Uh, four licenses is $140, etc., etc. So no, no breaks here for multiple licenses. And then you've got European currency and Great Britain currency. You've got Euro or GBP for uh, the British pound or the U.S. dollar. All right. And so this is the uh, first uh, distribution of Linux that I've encountered in quite a while where it requires you to uh, purchase a license, uh, kind of like Windows uh, does, uh, in order to continue using the full functionality of this distro. It appears to me, and I'm not absolutely sure about it, 
but it appears to me that if you don't get a license for this, that eventually the WX desktop support goes away. I think your ability to configure the operating system will probably go away as well. But uh, just bear that in mind and uh, when you're looking at this operating system. All right, so let me go ahead and get out of it. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click shut down and shut down. All right. All right, so this has been a quick look at uh, Linux FX11-1-1103 uh, from Brazil. And uh, I didn't go through everything that this uh, operating system offers, but uh, you can check it out yourself, and I've showed you how to do that. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up, and uh, that'll help me grow my channel. If you haven't subscribed to me, hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that. So this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel for a review of, system review of, Linux FX11-1-1103. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.